Hey, how's it going? I hope you're having a great day. So, um, we're working on trying to adjust a throttle position sensor on uh, my throttle body. And I could not find any videos explaining how to do this. And there's just written tutorials. So, and I found a pretty cool way to do this um, that helped out a lot. Because I thought mine was bad because I couldn't get step three going. I'll tell you. Let me go through this. So, I hope that it's showing up. So essentially, um, you look at this table here, and we'll start with test number one. It says find VTA and E2. And so, looking at your throttle body, if it's positioned this way, here, let me take these out and I'll show you. I'll just take one out. This is what I put in there. I'll just talk about that in just a second. So the bottom one, is going to be this is going to be your E2. It's basically laid out like this, um, just like that. So that's going to be E2 and them idle and them VTA. So test number one, it says for the 22 RE, and that's what I'm working on. Um, basically, put your ohm meter between the VTA and the E2. So that's going to be the second one in, second one in here, and this end one. And when I was doing that, I wasn't doing it with the clips. Anyways, I went through, um, and that one is with a, with the throttle closed, basically. Now, I should say, before I started any of this, um, you, you adjust this screw. All you do is you back it all the way out. You have to break loose this nut first and put in a Allen uh, wrench. It's like a 2 millimeter or something. And I took this off to make room to do all this. Um, anyways, I back it all the way out, and then you just then you just screw it in just so it touches the throttle responder or whatever you want to call it. And then you give it a quarter inch turn, and then you tighten that nut down. And that quarter inch turn just keeps the flap in there from ever sticking. It's just a quarter of an inch of it. That's gonna be like one thread or something. And I'll just keep that from ever accidentally sticking. So that's the first thing I did. And then that gives you a gauging point. So with that done, the throttle is closed and you do test number one, where you just take your own meter and you put it between VTA or VTA2 E2 and E2, and your resistance should be between uh, 0.47 kilo ohms and points uh, and six kilo ohms. That's a pretty wide range there. Anyways, I actually did that and um, mine checked out good. Then I went to number two and you basically put a feeler gauge and you can just stack them up if you don't have that exact one so I got it and it doesn't have to be super 100% right on so basically I got 0 .022 around that area and did it between my idle and E2 and it was less than 2.3k and where I got stuck was and I actually was able to gauge my feeler gauge almost exactly to 0.85 by stacking two together, I wedged it in there, went between the idle and the E2, and it says it's supposed to read infinite, and I could not get that one. And I could do number four, where wide open was working, and five was kind of working. But I, I was like, oh man, it must be bad. So then what I got the bright idea of doing is, because I couldn't, I was doing this by myself, and I'm like, well, if it's infinite ohms, adding some clips to it, it's not going to matter because... I was worried about using these clips, it would have been easier to throw off all your readings because these add resistance. But infinite ohms is like infinite ohms, so adding like 1k is not going to really change that. So what I did is I shoved those in there, I, excuse me, I had to stack my um, filler gauges and I kind of propped them up here so I don't get too much play in them. And right now it's infinite ohms, but um, before when I do this, it wasn't. Oops. Anyway, so I just stick those in there. Sorry about that. And then here's the secret. Instead of doing all that, I already did all those other tests and they work now. Now you can see I'm getting infinite ohms. And um, what I did was I loosened these screws and adjusted this specifically for that one test. What number is that? For the test three. And that's where I'm using the 85. Or 8.5, sorry, focusing, focusing, 8.85 millimeters from idle and E2, and again, there's idle and E2, the two bottom ones, 
and I got it on there and I just twisted it until it basically went to infinite ohms and I kind of twisted it over and you'll see it go out of range and so I got right to the edge where it was not wanting to do it and then I just gave a little tap to where it went to infinite ohms and that's where I tightened it down I just used the screwdriver twice also you definitely want to get a vessel uh, screwdriver I'll put a link in these because these are Japanese screwdrivers and they're not Phillips don't use Phillips screwdrivers on Japanese cars uh, you can use these on American cars and they're better than a Phillips screwdriver um, and once you uh, use one of these you'll never go back to the American ones again the Phillips they're just not these are just a way superior screwdriver for definitely for Japanese because you can't use the Phillips on Japanese you'll just strip them out um, what I'm talking about is when you put it inside the deal there anyhow I'll put a link to those but so and then I tighten them up and now it works and uh, so probably a, a better way to be do this would be to do this first what I just described and then go back and do the other test in other words that should be almost test number one test number three I hope this makes sense um, and if it doesn't, uh, I guess leave a comment. I couldn't find any videos on this, but I'm pretty sure. And some of this, also another thing, what happened was originally was my idle was super high, and that's because I cleaned out my throttle body, put it back together, and whoever had the car before me, it was so gummed up it wasn't getting air through it. So they just tightened up the throttle cable, so the throttle cables are actually causing the throttle to be a little bit open all the time, and I didn't realize that. And then when I loosened it, um, and I had taken this off also to clean it. Um, so if you take that off, you got to readjust. And in my case, I would have had to adjust anyways because somebody had it too tight. And it was always open a little bit. So once I got the air flowing, I had to adjust this. And even if you buy a new one of these, you're still going to have to adjust it to put it on. So it's something worth learning how to do. Anyways, a lot of rambling there, but I was just really excited that I figured out a way. Plus, I could do it by myself. I couldn't get any, nobody's around. I couldn't get anybody to hold this while I'm trying to put a feeler gauge in here and turn the knobs on my gauge and then use a screwdriver. But using these little post things, they're just from stereo connectors. Anyways, just really happy to finally get this done. And I hope this video helps somebody out out there. If if um, you don't understand it, maybe I'll try to make a more detailed one, but I'm probably not going to pull my throttle body off again. Anyways, I hope this makes sense to somebody out there. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you subscribe, you'll see more videos as they come out. Thank you for watching.